Pull up the curtains. Turn on the lights. It's gonna have glamour. Shining bright. This is the show. The very best kind. Is everybody feeling fine? There ain't no business like show business, baby. Show time. It is show time. So you were here last year, and your show was phenomenal. Oh, thank you. I, I, I don't imagine we can outdo last year. Last year, they were showing the film where the production designers talk about production design, and I found that great woman who said those memorable words, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And I gotta tell you, even in my regular life, I often reflect on that phrase. The main, the main thing, thing is, is to, to keep, keep the, the main, main thing, thing the main thing. thing. I find it very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a fun time last year and I'm looking forward to this year as well. Do you feel like you learned something new about uh, production design and the I art directors? I learned nothing about <laughs> production design last year. It's very exciting to see such a switch up of the costumes uh, that you did with Danny Boyle for uh, Slumdog Millionaire going into 127 hours. What was it like to make such a complete cultural shift working with the costumes? Danny actually makes everything feel the same, so it always feels like a challenge. And actually, his whole uh, with his team, he sort of, you know, he sort of um, lays out a challenge for us with every different each film we do that we sort of have the sense that we've never done it before. Um, it always feels like we're all out of our element, and his philosophy is that that would always bring out the best in everybody who's participating. What were you thinking about in regards to the colors that uh, James Franco's character wears? Um, well, a lot of it came directly from the real Aaron Ralston in terms of um, the kind of clothes he was wearing. You have one guy stuck in this relentless sandstone colored landscape, this salmony, peachy world. And Aaron's shirt <laughs> is exactly that color and I was sort of worried that maybe that was the wrong choice for a really long time because but in the end I actually think it other than it being sort of correct for what Aaron really wore uh, it's also I think it helps the intensity of the film and the feeling you get so that every time you're outside the canyon in his dreams or his um, hallucinations or even when he escapes we had somewhere to go we could make things blue and green and fresh and heavenly and and not relentless dry sandstone in regards to the graphic print that was on his shirt yeah. what was the inspiration for choosing what what he represented in that shirt. The main inspiration was Aaron's a huge, Aaron, the real Aaron Ralston is a huge mega fan of the band Fish, the sort of jam band. And he wore his favorite Fish t shirt on that day, not the one that's in the film. Uh, the one he wore was a sort of shameless advertisement for Fish. So, what I did to just sort of retain the honesty of the kind of person Aaron is, um, I went through Fish's back catalog of concert t shirts and I we landed on that one. Mostly because I felt like I needed to, to you know, he, ha he, he has to have something that sort of feels like everything is possible and, and be a sort of happy reminder of the outside world rather than something that was sort of going to be a relentless thing that we needed to watch and be stuck in there and get sick of. Um, so it was just a, just was a little bit of a maybe ironic nod of, of the, the sort of opposite of what his circumstances were. And what comes next for you? Uh, well, right now now, in fact, tonight I just missed uh, the first preview of Frankenstein, which Danny Boyle is directing at the National. I've, I've done the costumes for it, so we open in, on February 22nd at the National Theatre in London, and the same design team are also working on the, um, the opening ceremonies of the London 2012 Olympics. Awesome. So that's the next 18 months. Um, as an actor, how, do, how does what you walk into on the set really influence you when you're when you're trying to get in the moment of the scene? Well, it's funny because obviously you you know the words and everything um, lead you there. As an actor, you go into wardrobe and you know if you're Alec Guinness. It, starts with a hat or maybe it starts with something from makeup like a beard or whatever and then once you land uh, on the set um, that uh, that can be extraordinary and it's interesting because when I saw Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow which was a lot of green screen and really beautiful 
I, I did feel, and I don't know if this is right or wrong to say, but I did feel like there was an absence of reality to some of the behavior from the actors because what production design and, and, and art direction is all about is allowing not just the viewer but the actor to inhabit that world. Right. And I think that um, you know the best in the business are, are magicians and they make you believe that the woman is actually being sawn in half. There's something so incredibly beautiful about the illusion that these guys create. Have you had the opportunity to act in front of a uh, green screen? I have. I did a movie with Liam Neeson and he spoke uh, a little bit. I won't put words into his mouth, but he spoke to the um, the difficulty of you know the Phantom Menace or whichever one of those Star Wars things that he was involved in. And you know you're 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 at a um, you really have to trust the post team, you know, because when they come to you and they say, uh, you're in a huge cave and there's a dinosaur that breathes fire, and then, you, you know, you, you, you hope they're not lying. It's a challenge. It's much easier to actually be um, in, a, in a cave than a produ production designer made, right. or, or an actual cave, which is also kind of, I guess that's expensive.